The Lord be with you. The Gospel for today of the Lord Jesus Christ is according to St. Matthew, chapter 25, verses to begin at 14. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. For it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well then, good and trustworthy slave, you have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For the Gospel of our Lord. Christ be to Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Our loving and heavenly Father, as we are seated here to listen to your word, Speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once again, I welcome you all to this morning worship service and um, special welcome to uh, Henry's family members. Thank you for joining us this morning. May God bless you and be with you always. Amen. Today I'm not going to preach from the readings that we read today. <laughs> but we'll have... Um, homily reflected in relation to baptism. So I thought I would share a story with you, a story which I heard recently when I was visiting one of our friends from our parish. So a real story. Maybe I did some altering to that story. <laughs> so what happened? A priest, he was, he was preparing a child for baptism. So he went and met uh, this family, lovely family, so he was preparing the family for the baptism, especially he was preparing the child for the baptism. So he wanted to convey to the child um, in baptism God's protection and God's care and love uh, will be there for this child. And he wanted the child to understand and know that God is there always for him. So he asked the child, 
dear son, if something goes terribly wrong in your, in your, on your side, who will you go first to? Uh, the child thought for a while and he said, Mom. Uh, then the priest like, uh, yes, yes, true. You will go to your mom for first. Uh, okay, let's, let's not uh, disturb mom. If not mom, who will you go then? Then he thought again, then he said, dad. The priest was like, oh, he should have been prepared. <laughs> he didn't expect these answers from this child. So he wanted somehow to push that he wanted to, uh, wanted the child to say it should be God. <laughs> then he asked, okay, this should be the final chance. Then he asked, okay, if not dad and mom, who will you go to? Then he thought for a while and he said a name who happened to, his, to be his best friend. <laughs> so he said, I'll go to Tom or someone like this. Then the priest was like, oh, then he thought, I'm not going to ask any more questions. But he told the child that you also have God to whom you can go unto. So today I'm not asking that question to Henry. <laughs> and Henry is also not, <laughs> may not be willing to answer me either. But what I'd like to convey here is, from the scriptures we read, in the Gospels, Luke chapter 11, Jesus, when he was talking to his disciples, he said, when a father, when a son asks his father for a fish, would he provide a serpent? If your earthly father can provide the best for you, how much more the heavenly father can gift you and provide you with, especially the Holy Spirit. So God is also our parent, God as a father, which is doctrinally we claim, we proclaim, and we confess our faith, profess our faith. In the Old Testament, we also see God as a mother. Especially when we read the book of Isaiah, God speaks to uh, Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, saying, as a mother comforts, I comfort you. As the mother eagle broods over the nest and protects the young ones, I protect you. And I keep you under my shelter. And Jesus also says, as a hen would cover under his wings, under, its, under her wings, the eggs and the chicks, so I cover you and protect you. God is also a mother. And then finally, in John chapter 15, we read, Jesus calls his disciples, he says to his disciples, I do not call you as disciples, but I call you as my friends, because I revealed everything to you and I do not hide anything from you. So I just would like to convey, um, not only to the parents who admitted their child for baptism, but for everyone, as parents and grandparents, um, shall we encourage our children and ensure them that we have God who is our parent, a father and a mother, and also a friend. And at times when we don't have anyone, we have God unto whom we can go. We can pour out ourselves. We can seek for help. And when the baptism was happening, we prayed the beautiful prayers of thanksgiving. Sue and Ross helped in praying those wonderful prayers. There, if we carefully um, observe, the prayers come like this. Lord, we thank you for the waters. In the beginning, during creation, the Holy Spirit was there. And this connection of water with creation and then with life and light. Water, we say, an elixir of life. Without water, there is no baptism, we know. And water ensures us <laughs> or it connects with us the truth of life and light. There is life always. And then we read the prayer, at the Red Sea waters, God saved the Israelites from Egyptians. So God is there for us to save and to lend us a hand to help when we are in need. And finally, we also read, when Jesus was baptized, the Holy Spirit filled him. We are blessed with the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God helps us, motivates us, comforts us. In John we read, 
Jesus said, I give you a paraclete who is a comforter. So he is there always for us to comfort us, to help us, and to strengthen us. So I strongly encourage uh, parents, godparents, and everyone here alone that we take time to spend time with our children together to spend time with God. Take a time once in a week or daily or once in a month even to sit together and pray together. And uh, we have given a beautiful uh, small Bible. I hope you would read um, beautiful stories to uh, Ellie and uh, Henry. I also encourage you to read some stories from the Bible as well. So may the good Lord bless us all. Special blessings to Henry and also to Ellie at this time. May God protect you, guide you, and be with you. And bless you in all your needs. May God be your provider. Amen. Amen. Shall we pause for a while? and ponder upon the words that we just heard.